I'm Spencer Mazik, and joining me now is lawyer-turned-greeting cards manufacturer Keisha DePaz. Her company, Punch Street, designs greeting cards focused on urban young adult and teen life. Welcome, Keisha. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Spencer. Thank you for having me. So is it true that you came up with the idea for this company, your greeting cards company, by watching an episode or while watching an episode of HBO's The Wire? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was late 2010. I was a third year at um, Freed, working at Freed Frank. And um, I was watching the HBO series The Wire on Netflix. And there is a scene where uh, Bodhi, one of the street boys, is looking for flowers for his deceased friend. And I remember this. I remember that I'm episode. Glad you do. <laughs> <laughs> this is my scene. This is my favorite scene. Um, so the store employee brings him in the back because he is just not pleased with the design of the regularly arranged flowers. So they head to the back, and um, there are just the most unique, uniquely arranged flowers. I mean, you have flowers in the form of an RIP sign, a cell phone, uh, a Mercedes-Benz ben logo. I think there was even like a dollar sign. Yes, <laughs> yes, right. And the reason why he's so happy, it's because that those flowers represent more of his culture and the culture of the recipient that, you know, who he, would, he was bringing the flowers for. Um, and so in seeing Bodhi's pain point that he wanted more of his culture in those flowers, I guess the writer in me said, well, I'm going to do greeting cards. You know, he needs a greeting card to match with that. So um, from that point, I got the idea that to do something special for, for my demographic. I guess it's a about. testament that you can find inspiration anywhere. Anywhere. <laughs> and you mentioned that you, at the time, you were at, at Freed Frank, so you yes. didn't quit your job immediately to pursue this idea, did you? No, no. It, um, it was a slow, a slow moving effort towards um, Punch Street. I first got the idea um, after watching the episode, and um, I would spend nights, I would spend weekends and holidays working on it until about 2011 late 2011 when the site was about to get coded that I said, okay, well, you know, I think that it's the, it's time for the next step. So do you think it took a, any certain amount of courage to leave? Because I say courage because I, it has to take some bravery to, to leave a very secure, steady job to go to something as risky as a startup. Yes, definitely. But you know what? Um, I look at it as it was a calculated risk. Um, you don't want to just be risky and just risk it all. But I think that it, in, in figuring out, the, getting the idea and going from, from 2011 till, from getting the idea in 2010, I was saving up, I was taking certain steps to make sure that I would be okay. I even sold my duplex apartment. Mm. So, you know, bye-bye <laughs> <laughs> duplex uh, apartment. Um, sold my duplex apartment. Um, I never owned a car. I never had a credit card before that. I paid with everything cash. So I was saving up and making sure I would be able to take that step, but What's, definitely risky. Tell me this, though. Did you uh, enjoy practicing law? You did civil litigation and securities regulation. Yes, and I enjoyed it. I, I left about um, going, like, mid fourth year and I had a fair res amount of responsibility on my cases and I, I really enjoyed it and but for I think the idea and really wanting to do something special for my generation I think I would have continued practicing law. So are you saying Keisha prior to watching this very inspiring episode of The Wire that you had never even considered starting your own business before that? No. Wow no. that's amazing <laughs> to me. Yes yeah no. I so what did your it. family and friends think about your decision to leave law behind? Absolutely supportive, 100%. When I got the idea, the first person that I called was my mother. And she didn't really understand what I was talking about when I was just saying, you know, I think I'm going to try doing these cards for um, my generation, you know, cards that big card companies ignore. Um, she was happy and, and still talking about cards that she would want to see, and, and she was just saying, okay, well, you know, if this is what you want to do, go for, go for it, so. And your mom has been very supportive because very now supportive. you're working out of her basement in Queens, right? We took over the basement. <laughs> <laughs> she does not belong in the basement. Yeah. We're like, mom, why are you coming down? So, and, and I appreciate that. I mean, without that type of support, where would I be? So you said that you've invested pretty much your entire life savings into this yes. company. Yes. And did, but I, re, I realized and I read that you actually got a scholarship. You received a scholarship to go to St. John's Law School. So does that at least mean that you didn't have to re worry about paying any student loans, repaying any student loans? No. I still have student <laughs> loans <laughs> that I'm able to defer at the moment, and I still have to revisit that. So, no. But 
Um, huge shout out to St. John's, <laughs> um, great institution, but yeah, I still have to worry about those loans. So let's talk about these greeting cards that address subjects like teen pregnancy, incarceration, bullying, and rehab. Are any of these topics too sensitive to be dealt with in a greeting card? Um, I don't think so. I think that my generation goes through so much that we need that love and support. Um, so what we're trying to do is not, I guess, we're not trying to cause controversy. It's really meaningful and um, tasteful. We really care about our uplifting my generation. So well, is there anything off limits as far as you're concerned, Keisha? Not that I have thought of so far. Um, all of the card ideas come from me. So I figure out, you know, well, I either through personal experience or through my friends um, or things I read about what's going on in the culture, I figure out, well, you know, we need cards like this. So, um, Where do you draw your inspiration? Just about anywhere. I mean, um, for example, I took a trip to the Graffiti Haven Five Points. Um, have you been there? It's in Long Island City. No, no I can't say that I have. Well, it's I'm beautiful. You've got to visit uh, Five Points. But they have all these uh, messages in graffiti. And that's the inspiration for one of our cards that says, believe in yourself. And, and the graffiti is you know, splattered against the wall. Um, I could be reading a magazine or um, even reading the Wall Street Journal. So. Um, watching a movie, The Wire. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the place. It all started so with The Wire. It starts and, you know, ends with The Wire. So just about anywhere. So before preparing for this interview, I thought that print cards were a dying breed, you know, with e-cards and paperless posts and some of these other things taking off. But it's actually a seven to eight billion yes. dollar industry. <laughs> is that right? Yes. Yeah. So um, a lot of people think that uh, you know, printed cards is like a dying tradition, but it's not true. People are still buying printed cards, so. And not just people, the demographics that you're targeting, the 20-somethings, right. the teens, the 30-somethings, they're the folks who are actually buying these print cards, right? Right, they're a very active and, and ripe demographic. Um, we find that millennials, once they start experiencing certain um, life events, like marriage, they have their own um, home address, they have kids, they're really active in the greeting market. So, and they spend 41% more than baby boomers when they're purchasing cards, so. That's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> and so you touched on this just a little bit ago, but what's the goal? What's the mission for Punch Street? Well, we aim to be a company that represents a, a culture, but we also want to be one that pushes a culture forward. And I think that that requires um, uh, a dominant, being a dominant force in the industry to continue representing for people that don't normally receive stationary love. What do you mean by pushing the culture forward? Um, well, given that big card companies don't have these card lines, yet it reflects something that many millennials go through. I mean, that's a problem. We want to, we, I, I want cards where I could um, see my young friend, although she, she's a single mother, but she's, you know, loving and she's supportive and she's doing her thing. So um, we need cards like that. When I have a, a, a young um, friend going through bullying, I want to send him a printed card so that he doesn't have to scroll through Instagram and thousands of, of pictures or, you know, a clutter inbox to find out that someone really cares for him. Mm -hmm. So um, so that's why we do that. How did you come up with the name Punch Street? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, okay. So we wanted the name Punch Cards just because we liked punch. We liked, you know, delivering with sort of vigor. Sort in your face. Yeah. <laughs> the knockout <laughs> greeting company you've been waiting for. Um, but uh, that name was taken. Um, and then I just added street to it. And I feel like it definitely represents um, a place that you feel that you can come to and feel comfortable. It's a lifestyle, it's a culture, it's a street, it's a neighborhood. So I feel like the name Punch Street really. I get um, it, it's yeah. like Sesame Street yeah. or any of these <laughs> right. other streets. <laughs> right, you think of, of kids when you think, um, when you hear Sesame Street or, you know, bankers when you hear about Wall, Wall Street. Street. Now I want you to think, you know, urban millennials when you hear about Punch Street. So. And in terms of branding your startup, I hear that you're inspired by certain celebrities, in particular Lady Gaga. Oh, yes. Can you please explain that? <laughs> uh, Lady Gaga is just 
awesome to me. Um, the way she goes about branding herself, I even wrote a piece for it. I write for um, under30ceo.com, and I wrote a piece about her branding abilities and just um, things that she has done. And I, I really like that she is into, you know, bravery and accepting of our culture and, and the Born This Way um, line. That's one of your cards, in right, fact. Right, right. So we have cards that represent for our LGBT um, brothers and sisters. So ladies Lady Gaga is definitely, and, and a lot of other pop stars are highly influential on what goes on those cards, so. Well, that's great. And so for folks who want to go out there and buy it, is it www.punchstreet.com? Yes, www.punchstreet.com. Uh, it says it here on the shirt. <laughs> and uh, we're on social media as well, at Punch Street for Twitter and Instagram, and uh, facebook.com slash Punch Street Well, Facebook. thanks so much for joining us today. Good luck with everything, Keisha. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Spencer. For more information on this or other topics, subscribe to BloombergLaw.com. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for joining us. Bye, everybody. Thanks.